In the late 1930s to near mid-1940s, the situation in Europe and parts of Asia were a disaster, with World War II showing no end in sight and the Soviets being on the brink of falling to the Germans. On June 6th of 1944, the Allied forces launched an invasion of northern France in order to liberate France from Germany and open a second front to help the Soviets. Shortly after, France was liberated from Germany, causing Germany to surrender. This changed history because the Allied forces could now dedicate their forces to Japan, helping them win the war next year, possibly saving millions of lives. The Allied forces broke down a barrier, the defenses of another France, called the Atlantic Wall. The reason that the Allies wanted to break the Atlantic Wall is that they wanted to liberate France quickly, which is why they carried it out instead of going through Italy like Churchill suggested, which would have taken many more months. The Atlantic barrier got destroyed, paving the way for Allied victory. One of the main reasons that World War II began goes back to the end of the First World War. When the Treaty of Versailles was signed, it put the blame of the war on Germany so they had to pay massive amounts of reparation and limit their military. They also lost some of their territory. This caused Germany to go through a massive economic crisis. During this time, people were in search of someone who would get them through these hard times, and Hitler was chosen. He secretly and slowly began to raise an army well beyond the limits that had been put in place by the treaty. Britain and France actually did know that Germany was raising a massive army, but they didn't do anything, hoping that their military would help stop the spread of communism. In 1936, Germany would make an alliance with Japan and Italy. This would come to be known as the Axis powers. When Germany invaded Poland and the rest of Slovakia, the war officially began. The battle for France began on May 10th and ended on June 25th of 1940. In just six weeks, German armed forces were able to capture Paris and force the surrender of the French government. The battle began when the Germans went through the Ardennes Forest, a forest close to the southern Belgium. This would help because the French believed that the Germans would not be able to move their tanks through the forest, so they thought that the defenses they had built up after World War I would be enough, even though they didn't go all the way to the English Channel. The forces that were there to meet the Germans were ill-equipped. After the Battle of France, the only standing Allied force in Europe was Britain. Adolf Hitler suspected an attack along the northern coast of France and put Aaron Rommel in charge of building up defenses along that area. The barrier would become known as the Atlantic Wall. The Atlantic Wall required more funding and manpower than the Germans had. So they decided to focus on major ports. They believed that the most likely location for an invasion was Calais because it was just 20.7 miles across the English Channel. The rest of the coastline, including Normandy, one of the beaches they invaded on D-Day, were less defended. Churchill and Roosevelt were early supporters of the Second Front in Europe. Churchill wanted the U.S. to send soldiers to the battle, but the U.S. couldn't because of some laws it had. However, after Pearl Harbor was attacked, the U.S. declared war on Japan. Germany engaged with the U.S. because of the agreement between Japan and Germany. Both Churchill and Roosevelt agreed that an invasion of Europe would be compulsory to win the war. All the countries involved in D-Day had their own problems causing the invasion to keep getting pushed back. They knew that the invasion would not be able to be carried out any earlier than 1944. So they continued their campaigns against North Africa and Italy to keep making progress while they prepared for D-Day. D-Day would require a lot of planning. And since it was decided that ultimately America would be the country to place larger forces in Western Europe, it would be up to them to choose a leader for the mission. And while they would have liked Roosevelt to choose Marshall, Roosevelt considered him irreplaceable as chief of staff, so Eisenhower was chosen instead. General Montgomery, who was under Eisenhower, had the responsibility of playing most of the invasion and commanding the Allied ground forces that were going to land on the French coast. The reason that the coast of Normandy was chosen is because there's two important ports located there, Cherbourg and Le Havre, that would help supply the Allied forces. The ultra British military intelligence informed the Allied leaders that the Germans expected an attack at Passe de Calais, so there would be stronger defenses set up there than at Normandy. Months before D-Day 
the Allied forces began one of the largest military deceptions ever to be carried out, codenamed Operation Fortitude. The Allied forces would purposely elect some radio transmissions of an invasion at Paul de Calais go to the Germans, who would believe they're real and build more and more defenses around Paul de Calais and less around Normandy. The Allied forces also made a dummy army across Paul de Calais to help sell the idea of the main invasion being at Paul de Calais. They, they used double agents who told the Germans that there may be an attack at Normandy, but that would just be a diversion. The Germans arguably believed this till the end of the war. After all of the planning and preparation, after all of the deception, it was time. Time for the invasion, D-Day. It was originally scheduled for June 6th, but the weather was too rough to risk it, so it was delayed till the next day. Even though the storm would carry into the next day, they went ahead, putting their faith and their troops' lives in the meteorologist's hand. The meteorologist made the call that there would be a short break in the storm on the morning of June 6th. The word was given. Halcon plus five finally and definitely confirmed. This was code for go. Then the first stage of D-Day began, and thousands of troops began to land and secure the immediate surroundings. Before the infantry had arrived, the Allied forces attempted to soften the German defenses with an air attack. However, they were late assembling over in uh, England, and they had to, out of fear of bombing their own soldiers, bomb three miles further inland, and the Navy had also failed to dig foxholes for the infantry. So as a result of all of this, the infantry had to dig their own foxholes while getting shelled by the Germans. The young soldiers that arrived were from America, Canada, and Britain. These soldiers arrived at five different beaches in France. The invasion begins at 6.30 a.m. The Coast Guard was responsible for dropping the ramp when the ramp to the small landing craft dropped. The soldiers would make a run for the beach. Many were shot down immediately by the German machine guns. And even if they did manage to get out of the landing craft, they would have to try to get through the waters and reach the beach. That might not have been so difficult if it wasn't for the weight of their equipment and the mines and obstacles that were hidden in the waters and the massive amounts of bullets that were being fired at them. Some people, paratroopers, came in from planes and dropped down onto the beaches. Many paratroopers were shot at from the ground and landed on top of trees and other hard surfaces to come down from. Even if they made it to the surface, many were lost and had been separated from their troops and divisions, mainly because the pilots of, and the paratroopers' lack of experience. After the first couple hours, other waves of soldiers began to arrive, and soon they began to push up. By June 11th, the beaches were secure, and just like that, the most famous amphibious invasion ever was over. Germany had had months, perhaps even years, to prepare for an invasion, so why did they lose? They lost due to many reasons. One of them being lack of material and money to build the Atlantic Wall from edge to edge of the coast of France. This is why they came to the compromise of adding heavier defenses to the bigger ports, which they thought the Allied forces would need, and not adding as much protection to the other smaller ports and beaches like Normandy. And they were victims of the biggest military deception scheme ever. They were double agents which would feed the Germans with false information, which is why the Germans told the end of the war believed that the main attack would come from Paul de Calais. The day before D-Day, there was a big storm that was going to last for two days, but there was a break in the storm. That's when the soldiers landed on Normandy. But the Germans were unaware of the break in the storm, and many soldiers, including the general of that sector, Aaron Rommel, were going off the defenses. Aaron Rommel was going to surprise his wife with some Parisian shoes. So the Germans got a big surprise when they saw the Allied forces coming. When the invasion started, Rommel realized that more troops would be needed, so he requested for them. But Hitler would have to agree, and he was sleeping, and nobody dared to wake him up. When he woke up, he still believed that was a distraction, but eventually he agreed to send more troops there. But by then it was too late. If the generals had had some more power and more weather data, they might have been able to stop the Allied forces and perhaps have sealed a victory. After D-Day, the Allied forces began bringing in tons of vehicles and troops using the beaches of a massive port. They would use this port to bring in the things needed to take back France and eventually win the war. France was liberated or freed of the Germans thanks to the Allied forces who came through the port. 
It was fairly easy once the Allied forces took over the coast, because now they could bring in tons of equipment and other materials. After France was liberated, Germany would surrender. After D-Day, the war soon came to a close in Europe, and this was all t thanks to D-Day. Without D-Day, there would have been a higher chance that the Axis forces would win, or that the war would drag on for several more bloody years. But not all the lives that D-Day saved would be soldiers. D-Day helped halt the massive genocide that Hitler and his army were causing. With gas chambers and firing squads, they killed 6 million Jewish people and millions more Poles, Russians, gays, disabled people, and others des undesirable to the Nazi regime, which sought to engineer a master Germanic race. So it is safe to say that millions of people were saved by the thousands who fought on D-Day. After Victory Day in Europe, there's still the Japanese that needed to be fought. After D-Day and the surrender of Europe, the Americans were able to focus on defeating the country that got them into the war in the first place. It would have arguably taken longer if they had not carried out the invasion of France via Normandy and D-Day. The Americans would finish the war completely on August 15th when the Japanese surrendered to them. This and everything else I've talked about leads many, including me, to believe that all countries owe their democracy to D-Day.